Hello and welcome to this new video in the Theory of Computation lecture series. Today we will continue with Klein's theorem and in particular we will see how we can build a union finite automata which is part of the part 3 of the proof of Klein's theorem. And if you are new to our channel, please like and subscribe to our videos, subscribe to our channel and uh, activate the bell button so that you can receive our newly released videos right away. So in the previous video, we looked at part one and part two of uh, Killeen's theorem. Today we will look at part three and in this part three of the proof, which uh, aims to prove how we can transition from a regular expression to a finite automata, we will use a recursive definition and a constructive algorithm at the same time, which is uh, the hardest part of the whole theorem, actually. So we will start with the fact that we know that for every regular expression, we can build up, it can be built up from the letters of the alphabet and the empty string by repeated applications of certain rules, including the addition, concatenation, and the closure. So, in other words, we shall see that we are building, when we are building a regular expression, we could be at the same time building actually the finite automata that accept the same language. So, since we actually, we have been dealing with uh, recursive definitions, we must set, uh, we must give a given set of rules so we shall prove so we shall provide a proof for each rule we introduce and we will enable that this will enable us to define the three remaining algorithms we spoke about in our previous video so with rule number one um, there is a, an fa that accepts any particular letter of the alphabet and there is an fa that accepts the word empty string so to prove this eventually if x is part of the alphabet then the corresponding finite automata is as following so from the initial state we would just go to the final state if we consume an x but x from the alphabet anything else from the initial state would lead us to the sync state from the final state anything that we read any letter of the alphabet will take us to the sync state from the sync state we just loop around by reading any letter of the alphabet. So that's for proof one. The other thing for the rule number one uh, is the empty string. The FA associated with that is uh, we have an in, uh, initial final state plus minus. And if we read any letter in the alphabet, that will take us to a sync state from which we can never leave. So, which brings us now to rule number two, and rule number two is the main subject of this video. So, if there is an FA called FA1 that accepts the language defined by the regular expression R1, and there is another FA called FA2 that accepts the language defined by the regular expression R2, then there is an FA that we shall call FA3, accepting the language defined by the regular expression R1, or R2. How we are going to, pro to prove this is through the rule 2 algorithm, which is the second algorithm that uh, we are going to see as part of, remember we said four algorithms. So how this algorithm uh, is laid out, we will start with two machines, FA1 with states that are called X1, X2, X3, etc. FA2 with states labeled with Y1, Y2, etc. So then we build a new machine, FA3, with states called Z1, Z2, Z3, etc. Where each Z of these states is in the form X something or Y something. And the combination of X start or Y start is the start state of the new FA. So in other words, we take the start state from the FA1, the start state from FA2, we make them inside a new starting state for this new machine, FA3, which is uh, the start state of FA1 or the start state of FA2. So if either X or Y is part of a final state, 
then eventually if x is a final state in fa1 or if y is a final state in fa2 therefore the z state is in turn a final state and uh, one last remark eventually that will be important uh, in the build up of the transition to go from one z state to another we just read a letter of the alphabet or the other which is depending on how many letters in the alphabet we have and we observe what happened to the x part and what happened with the y part with the y part in other words when we have a state z it will be x something or y something we have to simulate when we read a letter of the input string we have to simulate how the, we will what will happen when, as if we are running that input letter on fa1 meaning from that state x where would we go to another state x something right and we do the same thing with the y so the z new which is the new z state that we transition to after reading the letter p will be x new after reading the letter p eventually on fa1 or y new after reading the letter p so this is eventually the abstract description of the algorithm we are going to look at a few examples so because there are finitely many number of x state and y state there can be only finitely uh, many possible z states not all of them will be necessarily used in the fa2 if no input string can go to all of them eventually and actually we can estimate the upper bound of this uh, number of z states which is the maximum number of z states that you can have is equal to the number of the states in fa in the first automata multiplied by the number of states in the second finite automata so that gives you the upper bound so it can be maximum that upper bound so in this way that we describe in this by the, in this uh, by this algorithm we can build the machine that accepts the sum of two regular expressions the sum here is uh, reg one regular expression or the other meaning sum is a kind of equivalent to the union if we already know eventually the machines that accept the component regular expressions separately so let's look at a concrete example let's take fa1 which accepts the language of words over alphabet a b that have a double a somewhere in them and fa2 accepts the language is the finite automata accepting the language of all words over alphabet a b that have an even number of a's and an even number of b's in them so we'll see how we can build fa3 which is the union of these two finite automata by applying this algorithm in other words we place we should place ourselves in the start state uh, which is in this case x1 or y1 both of them are start states and then eventually from that z1 state that we should call which will be equal to x1 or z1 we shall see eventually what happened when we read an A, what happened when we read a B. We will see how eventually and when would we stop and when would we know that we build the whole uh, union finite automata. Before we do that, so a few remarks. The language that the new machine should accept, obviously, is the union of these two languages that we described and we shall call the states eventually of this new machine z1 z2 etc and uh, we shall define this machine by its transition table which is the best thing that being said we can give either a transition table or a transition diagram either one would be fine our guiding principle while we do this the new machine will simultaneously keep track of where the input would be if it was running on fa1 and on FA2 eventually uh, in parallel. So first we would need the start state and as I said the start state will be the start state of FA1 or the start state of FA2. So uh, eventually if after that all the z states of the new machine shall keep track of which x state the string would be in and which y state this uh, the string would be in from those z states 
So for instance, from Z1 that we said X1 or Y1, if we read an A, uh, then eventually the string was running, uh, if the string was running in the first machine, it would be going to X2, or eventually if we were in the Z1, if it was equal to Y, then if we are at Y1 and we read an A, we would go to Y3. So here eventually, um, if we were at Z1 and we read an A, then we know that we went to another combination of X and Y. So in other words, whenever we see a new combination of X or Y, then we shall call it a new Z state. In this case, Z2 will be equal to X2 or Y3. And we know that from Z1, if we read an A, we would go to Z2 that will be equal to X2 or Y3. X1 is at the same time initial, but guess what? Y1 is also final. So therefore, Z1 is in term final. So in this case, Z1 is at the same time initial and final state and will denote it with plus minus. Eventually, we should continue. If we are at the state Z1 and we read the B, if we are uh, at X1, we will loop with the B and we stay in X1. If we are at Y1, we read the B, we go to Y2. This is a new combination, X1 or Y2, therefore we will call it Z3. And then we should we have new states Z2 and Z3. Remember, we are building a finite automata, a deterministic finite automata. Therefore, we have to have a transition from each of the states we have. So far, we have three states, Z1, Z2, and Z3. So we determine the transitions. Where would we go if we are at Z1, if we read an A or a B? Same thing with the Z2. So in, eventually, for a finite automata, we have to have outgoing transition, as many outgoing transitions as there are letters in the alphabet. So in other words, from each of these states, we have, we have to have two outgoing transitions. So continuing, uh, if we are at the state Z2 and we read an A, then uh, eventually we can go to the states X3 if Z2 equal to X1. And if Z2 equals to Y2, then we would go to Y1. And again, this is a new combination that, that is X3, uh, eventually uh, X3 or Y1 that we would call Z4. Uh, Z4 would be a final state since eventually both X1 and X3 are in themselves final. From Z2, if we read B, then eventually, uh, if Z2 equals to X1, we would go to remain in X1, and if Z2 equals to Y2, then we would go to Y4, and again, this is a new combination, X1 or Y4, we have not seen this combination before, therefore, we will label it with a new name, which is Z5. So at this point of time, our transition table looks like this. So we have two states, Z1 and Z2, that we know where would we go if we read one letter of the alphabet or the other. So are we quite done? Not really, because we have Z3, Z4, Z5. They are states, supposedly, in this uh, union finite automata, yet we don't know what happens when we are at Z3, Z4, or Z5. Therefore, as long as we have states that we go to, and we don't know where would we go if we read one letter or the other, we have to keep going. So, from Z3, if we read an A, we would go to uh, a new combination, which is X2 or Y4. This combination, since it is a new combination, we would call it Z6. And if we read B, we would still remain in Z1. Likewise, in Z4, if we read an A, we would go to uh, a new combination, which is X3 or Y3. And uh, this is a new combination that we call Z7. Z7 is final because X3 is final itself. If we read B, however, we again we will go to a new combination, which is X3 or Y2. And uh, likewise, this new combination that we call Z8 is a final state because X3 is final. 
Similarly, we have to keep going uh, Z from Z5. If we read an A, we would go to Z9. And uh, this is a new combination because it's X2 or Y2. We have not seen this combination before. Uh, if we read the B, we would go we would go to x1 or y3 which is also a new combination that is z10 from z6 we would if we read an a we would go to a combination that we have seen because it's z8 if we read the b we go to z10 i'm not spending as much time here but you can uh, uh, bring the video back to the initial automata two automata FA1 and FA2 and you can simulate this so this would be a good exercise from Z7 if we read an A we would go to Z4 however if we read the B we would go to a new combination that is X3 or Y4 and this combination is Z11 still we have to keep going to cover Z8, Z9, Z10 and Z11 so if we are at Z8 and we read an A, we go to Z11, we have seen this. If we read the B, we would go to Z4. Uh, Z, if we are at Z9, if we read an A, we go to Z11. If we read the B, we go to Z1. From Z10, if we read an A, we go to a new combination, which is X2 or Y1. This is Z12. Z12 is the final state. If we read B, however, we go to Z5 and we have seen this combination before. Finally, for Z11 and Z12, if we read an A, we go to Z8. If we read B, we go to Z7. And from Z12, if we read an A, we go to Z7. And if we read B, we go to Z3. So let's have, let's lay out the transition table at this point. So we have 12 states from Z1 to Z12 and in the states that we go to when we read an A or a B, all of the states that we go to, they are all in the set from Z1 to Z12. So, therefore, eventually all the states that we go to, we already cover them. In other words, we know from each state from Z1 to Z12, where do we go if we read an A or a B? So at this point we are confident that we can stop because we have our uh, full union automata. So notice that this uh, union finite automata has 12 states and uh, as I said before the uh, upper bound is the number of states of the first machine multiplied by the number of states of the second machine. So let's look at another example here we will be building the new machine accepting the sum of the regular expressions of the two following machine the first fa uh, eventually that accepts uh, strings that contains two con uh, consecutive a's double a in other words the second fa eventually accepts strings that uh, end with b first thing to do is to build the Z1. Z1 is equal to X1, which is start state of FA1, Y1, which is the start state of FA2, and then from there start uh, building the uh, transitions of the Z states eventually. So we identified the initial state, which is X1 or Y1. If we read an A from Z1, we would go to X2 or Y1, which is new combination that we call Z2. If we read the B and we are in Z1, we would go to X1 or Y2, and this is a new combination that is called Z3. And uh, Z3 is final because Y2 is itself final. Then eventually we have to continue to determine the transitions out of Z2 and Z3 if, and if there is a new combination of states we have to determine where would we go from there. So this would give us from Z2 if we read uh, an A we would go to a new combination Z4 that is equal to X3 or Y1. Z4 is final because X3 is final. If we read the B from Z2, then we would go to a new com uh, we would go to a new uh, the combination Z3 that that we have already seen. Uh, if we are at Z3 and we read the A, we would go to Z2 that we have already seen. 
if we read the b from z3 we would go to uh, remain in z3 actually then the next step is we have to determine the transitions out of z4 and z5 if we read an a from z4 we would remain in z4 if we read the b from the z4 we would go to z5 which is a new combination that is equal to x3 or y2 eventually uh, this is a final state because x3 is final from z5 if we read an a we would go to z4 and if we read the b from z5 we will loop in z5 so then eventually we can lay out the transition diagram so this is another option to represent the union uh, finite automata either by a, a transition diagram or by a transition table and we are confident here because we have all our uh, states uh, eventually because we know from each state where would we go if we read an a or a b so notice that here we have three states in the first automaton and two states in the second automaton therefore the multiplication two times three that's six that's the upper bound here we have five states which is less than that upper bound so always you can kind of estimate the maximum number of states which is all the combinations made out of x states and y states and with this uh, I reached the end of this video. Uh, thank you very much. If you again, if you this is the first time that you watch our videos, please subscribe to our channels, and I strongly recommend that you watch the previous videos in the playlist. Next time we will continue with the two remaining algorithms in uh, as part of part three uh, of the proof of Klein's theorem. So stay tuned and thank you very much.